Hey there, gadget enthusiasts! Today we're taking a nostalgic trip back to the groovy 60s. We're diving into the top 10 gadgets from that iconic decade that everyone wanted to get their hands on. From cutting edge tech to quirky innovations, these gadgets were the ultimate must haves. So, buckle up, hit that subscribe button, and let's explore the coolest gizmos that made the 60s so unforgettable. The Swinger, the incredible new low-priced Polaroid land camera for black and white pictures in 10 seconds. In the 60s, the Polaroid Swinger camera became an iconic piece of American technology. Launched in 1965, it was the first instant camera marketed specifically to a younger audience. Priced at $19.95, it was affordable and accessible, making it a popular choice for teens and young adults. The Swinger was designed by Henry Dreyfus and featured a sleek, modern look that appealed to the style of the era. With its yes indicator, users knew exactly when to snap the perfect shot, and in a minute, they had their print. This was a revolutionary concept at the time as traditional film cameras required film development, a process that could take days. Advertised with the catchy slogan, it says yes, the Swinger was heavily promoted on television and in print. It became a cultural phenomenon, often seen at family gatherings, parties, and vacations. It made photography fun and spontaneous, capturing moments instantly without the need for professional skills or equipment. The Polaroid Swinger eventually faded into obscurity. The rise of more advanced instant cameras and the eventual digital photography revolution made the Swinger seem outdated. By the late 70s, the Polaroid SX70 and other models had surpassed the Swinger in terms of popularity and functionality. These newer models offered better picture quality and more features, leading to the Swinger being phased out. For those who don't have a butler, Zenith suggests Space Command Remote Control. It changes channels. It changes sound levels. It even In the 60s, the Zenith Space Command Remote Control changed how Americans watched TV. Before remote controls, people had to get up to change channels or adjust the volume. This remote was a game changer, using ultrasonic sound to send signals to the TV, a technology that felt futuristic at the time. Zenith Electronics Corporation, the company behind this innovation, named it the Space Command to highlight its advanced technology. Unlike earlier remotes that used wires or required physical movement, the Space Command used high-frequency sound. This remote had no batteries. It worked by striking a metal rod to create sound waves, which the TV could interpret. The Space Command remote was durable and reliable. Brands like RCA and General Electric soon adopted similar technology, making ultrasonic remotes standard in American households. They offered convenience and were seen as a symbol of modern living. However, as technology advanced, the limitations of ultrasonic remotes became apparent. High-frequency sound could be disrupted by common household noises, and the remotes could only perform basic functions like changing channels and adjusting volume. Infrared technology emerged in the 80s, providing more reliable and versatile control. Infrared remotes could send more complex signals and were less prone to interference. In the 60s, Sony introduced the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder to America, revolutionizing the way people listened to and recorded audio. These machines became popular due to their high-quality sound and versatility. Brands like Sony, Akai, and Teak were at the forefront of this audio technology. Sony's TC630 was one of the iconic models of the time. It featured robust construction, reliable performance, and user-friendly controls. Musicians and audiophiles embraced these recorders for home use and professional settings. The Beatles, for instance, used reel-to-reel -reel recorders extensively during their recording sessions, highlighting the technology's importance in music production. Reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders offered superior sound quality compared to vinyl records and cassette tapes. They allowed for longer recording times and multiple tracks, making them ideal for studio use. Radio stations also adopted these machines for their programming, taking advantage of their ability to produce high-fidelity audio. The popularity of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders 
began to decline in the late 70s. The rise of compact cassette tapes, which were more convenient and portable, played a significant role in this shift. Sony itself contributed to this change with the introduction of the Walkman, which further popularized cassette tapes. In the 60s, the Motorola Pageboy was a revolutionary device in America. As one of the first personal pagers, it changed how people communicated, especially in professional settings. Introduced by Motorola, a leading electronics manufacturer at the time, the Pageboy was a compact, battery-powered device that could receive short messages, alerts, and pages. It quickly became popular in hospitals, police departments, and various industries that required immediate communication. One of the key features of the Pageboy was its simplicity. It didn't have a screen or complicated functions, just a small speaker that emitted a beep to alert the user of an incoming message. This straightforward approach made it user-friendly and reliable. Doctors, for instance, could be easily reached during emergencies, significantly improving response times and patient care. Despite its initial success, the Pageboy eventually became obsolete. The rapid advancement of technology in the following decades introduced more sophisticated devices. By the 80s, pagers with alphanumeric displays and the ability to send messages back became the norm, rendering the Pageboy's basic functionality outdated. Additionally, the rise of mobile phones in the 90s, which combined voice communication with text messaging and more, made pagers largely unnecessary for the general public. This is Odyssey, the new electronic game simulator. You attach Odyssey to your television set and set. The Magnavox Odyssey holds the title of the world's first commercial home video game console. It marked the beginning of the video game industry. Developed by Ralph H. Baer, often called the father of video games, the Odyssey was a groundbreaking device that paved the way for future gaming systems. The Odyssey was produced by Magnavox, an American electronics company. It came with a white, black, and brown box, and was equipped with two paddle controllers and a few cartridges. These cartridges didn't contain any data, but rather altered the circuits inside the console to display different games on the screen. One of the most popular games was a version of Ping Pong, which later inspired the famous game Pong by Atari. Unlike today's consoles, the Odyssey didn't generate sound and required players to place plastic overlays on their TV screens to simulate color graphics. The games were very simple and included activities like table tennis, skiing, and a haunted house game. Despite its simplicity, the Odyssey sold around 350,000 units by the time it was discontinued in 1975. Many consumers mistakenly thought it could only work with Magnavox TVs, limiting its market potential. Additionally, the games were too simplistic to retain long-term interest, especially as more advanced systems like Atari's Pong came into the market shortly after, and by the late 70s, the Odyssey had faded into obscurity. Taking pictures with a Kodak Instamatic camera is easier than witchcraft, and they start at less than $19. They really are a perfect gift. The Kodak Instamatic revolutionized photography in the 60s in America. Introduced in 1963, it was Kodak's response to the growing demand for an easy-to-use camera that could capture everyday moments. This compact, affordable camera featured a simple point-and-shoot design, making it accessible to everyone, from amateur photographers to families documenting their lives. Kodak's innovation lay in the Instamatic's film cartridge system. Unlike previous cameras that required threading film onto spools, the Instamatic used a pre-loaded film cartridge. This eliminated the hassle of loading film, reducing the risk of exposure, and making it nearly foolproof to use. The Instamatic quickly became popular, selling millions of units. Models like the Instamatic 100 and 104 were household names. One notable aspect was the partnership with celebrities for marketing. Stars like Mickey Mantle and Walt Disney endorsed the camera, enhancing its appeal. The Instamatic's success was also boosted by its affordability, with prices starting at around $16.95, making photography accessible to a broader audience. The Instamatic began to decline in the late 70s. 
advances in camera technology, such as the rise of 35mm film cameras and the introduction of instant photography by Polaroid, offered more features and better quality images. It's the Philco Safari, the world's first battery-powered television set. That's right, transistor television that plays anywhere without plugging... In the 60s, the Philco Safari portable TV set made waves in American households. It was the first truly portable television, hitting the market in 1959. This little gadget was a symbol of innovation, with a sleek design and a compact size that made it easy to carry around. At a time when most TVs were bulky and stationary, the Philco Safari offered a new level of convenience. Philco, a major brand in consumer electronics, was already known for its radios and televisions. The Safari was a game changer. It featured a 2.75 inch screen, which was tiny compared to today's standards, but back then it was revolutionary. This TV set operated on batteries, which meant you could take it anywhere, a big deal before the era of mobile devices. It sold for around $250, a significant amount of money in the 60s, equivalent to over $2,000 today. Despite its high cost, it attracted tech enthusiasts and those looking to stay ahead of the curve. However, the Philco Safari didn't stay popular for long. The technology quickly became outdated. The screen was small and in black and white, while larger color TVs were becoming more affordable and widespread. Additionally, the rise of new brands and advancements in technology made the Safari less appealing. The Kodak Carousel Projector was a popular device in America during the 60s. Introduced by the Eastman Kodak Company in 1961, it quickly became a staple for showing slides. The projector used a circular tray that could hold up to 140 slides, making it convenient for viewing large collections of photos. During this era, the Kodak Carousel Projector was a common sight in homes, schools, and businesses. Families used it to show vacation photos and holiday snapshots. Educators used it for teaching and businesses used it for presentations. The projector's ease of use and reliability made it a favorite among many. One interesting fact is that the carousel projector played a role in the Apollo space program. NASA used these projectors for training astronauts and presenting mission briefings. This highlighted the device's capability and trustworthiness in high-stakes environments. Despite its popularity in the 60s and 70s, the Kodak carousel projector began to decline in the 80s. Advances in technology, such as the advent of video projectors and computers, offered more versatile and efficient ways to display images. By the 2000s, digital projectors and PowerPoint presentations had largely replaced slide projectors in both homes and offices. My copies. It takes an extraordinary machine to make copies on ordinary paper. The Xerox 914. The Xerox 914 photocopier changed the office landscape in America during the 60s. It was the first successful commercial plain paper copier and it revolutionized the way businesses handled documents. Introduced by the Haloid Company, later known as Xerox Corporation, the 914 could make copies quickly and efficiently, making carbon paper and mimeograph machines obsolete. The 914 simplified duplicating documents with its innovative technology using a process called xerography. It could produce seven copies per minute and handle up to 100,000 copies per month. This efficiency led to its rapid adoption in offices across America. By 1961, Xerox had placed 10,000 units in businesses, and by 1965, the number had grown to 100,000. Companies like IBM, General Electric, and Ford Motor Company were among its early adopters. The 914 was easy to use and reliable, factors that contributed to its widespread popularity. The machine wasn't without its quirks. It was known for overheating and even catching fire occasionally. Xerox addressed this by including a small fire extinguisher with each unit. Despite these issues, the demand for the 914 was immense and it became a symbol of office automation. 
By the 80s, digital copiers started to replace analog models like the 914. These new machines offered better quality, more features, and greater reliability. The Xerox 914, while groundbreaking in its time, couldn't keep up with the rapid pace of technological advancement. The Ristocrat jukebox was a popular feature in American diners and bars during the 60s. Known for its sleek design and high-quality sound, the Ristocrat became a symbol of the era's musical culture. The brand was established by Charles E. Ristow in 1949 and quickly gained popularity for its innovative and reliable jukeboxes. One of the key features of Ristocrat jukeboxes was their use of 45 revolutions per minute records, which were the standard format for singles during that time. This allowed the machines to hold more records and provide a wider selection of music compared to older models that used 78 revolutions per minute records. The Ristocrat S45, introduced in the early 50s, became one of the most iconic models known for its streamlined appearance and easy operation. The 60s saw a boom in jukebox popularity and Ristocrat was at the forefront. These machines were often found in diners, soda fountains, and bars, providing the soundtrack to many social gatherings. Popular artists of the time, such as Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and The Supremes, filled the playlists of these jukeboxes, making them a crucial part of the American music experience. By the 80s, jukeboxes had become more of a nostalgic novelty rather than a staple in public venues. Wow, wasn't that a blast from the past? Those 10 gadgets from the 60s truly revolutionized the way we live today. Which one was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you never miss out on our latest videos. We've got even more exciting tech nostalgia coming your way, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.